He's been dubbed the poster boy of the far right and the internet's ultimate supervillain. And even before Milo Yiannopoulos ultimate opens his mouth, super villain. this is the kind of reaction he gets. Riots Sheesh. erupted at the University of California at Berkeley as students protested his controversial views, ultimately shutting down a planned My speaking gracious. event. And he's coming to Australia in December. So, who is Milo Yiannopoulos and what exactly does he stand for? Well, we're going to ask the man himself because he joins us now from New York City this morning. Milo Yiannopoulos, Yay. welcome to Studio 2. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, um, you have... Your critics call you anti-Semitic, <laughs> homosexual hating, white supremacist, <laughs> yet you've publicly said that you are a proud gay man, you're, you, are, you have Jewish heritage, and you've just recently married your black boyfriend. Congratulations, by what? the way. Uh, lots of people... Thank you. Oh, no, they call... <laughs> <laughs> they call him homosexual hating? And they call him racist? <laughs> And he married a black dude, and he's gay. Oh my gracious! I don't, I don't think I can write these. Thank you, thank you so much. Lots of people want to label you, so tell us what mm -hmm. does what does Milo stand for? Well, I'm a free speech activist, so sometimes I say outrageous and controversial things. Sometimes I'm a jokester and a trickster and a Loki-esque figure. Um, the political left, the you know the the feminists and the social justice warriors and the you know leftist journalists don't like me very much and call me a variety of names because they find me difficult to categorize. They don't understand how a gay guy could have these opinions or or, or whatever. I don't fit really fit into any box, so I represent sort of a, a threat to them because I'm persuasive and charismatic and have a huge fan base. Oh, um, very... They just really don't. Very modest as well, darling. <laughs> <laughs> also very humble. Very humble. <laughs> oh, because, Milo, I, I'm a feminist and I'm proud to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is she a fan or is she against him? Because he just now said feminists don't like him very much. <laughs> oh, because, Milo, I... I'm a feminist, and I'm proud to be a feminist, and a lot of what you say... That's OK. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll cure you soon. No. There's chemotherapy no, for no, that. No, 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 no. What... <laughs> I suppose, of course, everyone is entitled to a view and to free speech, but the mm. issue that I have mm. with you, and I suppose a number of critics have with you, is that you seem to just mm. stir up hate for the sake of it, because you want to get a reaction, because you want to provoke, and you don't seem mm. to then take the consequences for that. I don't think it's fair to say I stir up hate. I mean, most people would admit, I think, if they're, if they're being fair and reasonable, it's very difficult to describe yourself as not a feminist if you're in public life. And that's an enforcement of a particular political orthodoxy that is not shared by the majority of the public. I mean, very few women describe themselves as feminists. Fewer than one in five in America, just 7% in England. I'm sure the numbers for Australia, being a very sensitive, uh, very sensible country, are about the same. You know, the, these ideas that are being enforced in popular culture and on TV are not views reflected in the public. And the gap between the media and people at home is growing all the time. That's my insight and that's what I, I seek to expose and ridicule and have fun with. Um, it's perfectly fine if you're a feminist. My problem isn't that. My problem is you, is, and not you personally, but my problem is with those feminists who require us all in public to say we are too, when we might not be. We might think that feminism has run its course and had its, had its day, you know? Um, I'm not particularly interested um, in anybody else's specific positions. What I'm interested in is an open marketplace of ideas. Uh, you know, a, a fair, open uh, uh, you know, system where everybody can express themselves without fear of censure, without fear of professional disaster or social, you know, uh, peril, just because they cracked the wrong joke on Twitter can or I because, you know, they used the, the wrong language at work. Can I just interrupt for a second, Milo, because, uh, just pick up on what Jess mm -hmm. says, um, you do throw these social hand yeah. grenades out there and you do say things like, feminism is cancer, but if you drill down past the headlines um, and, and read some mm -hmm. of your work, I've read your book, I've, um, I've listened to a number of your podcasts, yeah. You do make some fair points, but mm -hmm. do you think this kind of outrageous shtick that you have is hurting you and turning people off <laughs> listening to you? No, I think the opposite's happening. I mean, millions of people on Facebook, a sold-out tour. Um... There you go, being humble again. <laughs> but, hey, y'all ass, y'all ass, and he just letting y'all know. Well, well, if I look at the majority of people that I'm hearing from, um, nah, they, they kind of fool with me. They like me. So um, I know there's people out there that don't, but for the most part, you know, they, they kind of like me out there.
Love me even. And by the way, Sydney is completely sold out now. We're adding a new date on the 30th of November. Very obviously, the opposite is true. There is a huge appetite for somebody who doesn't mind thumbing their nose and sticking their tongue out and pointing their middle finger up at the scolds and the nannies and the people who want to but tell Milo, us how to live. Milo, you for do years, more than conservatives. Stick, but you do more than stick your tongue out. I mean, because of the sorts of things you've written <laughs> along the lines of Islam is a cancer. Feminism is a cancer. You I never wrote that, rally... actually. That was invented by a journalist. The feminism's true. You rally your followers uh, for hate campaigns. There was mm -hmm. Leslie Jones, who was in Ghostbusters. Well, what do you mean by hate campaigns? I mean, this well, was invented by the media. Of... I wrote a review of Ghostbusters. Invented. I don't want to get into little details, but, but no, that I wrote a review a little of Ghostbusters detail. that defended her. It isn't it, no, no, no. The little detail is that actually, actually, I wrote a review of Ghostbusters that defended her. Then some people said some mean things about her, and I was blamed. Well, we don't blame Beyonce when her fans say mean things but to Taylor wait Swift. Wait a minute. We they don't were blame, your followers. You know, Justin Bieber they when, were your when his followers who said incredibly who? racist things says about who? her. Some mean people. So yeah, why and then, I went on CNN and I said it was horrible so and then, I said it was terrible. So but I'm not responsible for what they say. I'm responsible for what I say. Of a consequence. I like that. I like that. He's responsible for what he says. He's not responsible for everything that his daggone followers say. They're passionate about supporting their guy. And they might not know the heart that he comes from. They might just see the, the you know, the bear, the one-liner or, you know what I mean? But they probably know a bit more that he might not be privy to at the moment, and they want to point that out. It could be something positive, it could be something negative, but at the end of the day, he, can, he ain't got no daggone puppet strings on his supporters at all. No one does. So and then, I said it was terrible, so but I'm not responsible for what they say. I'm responsible for what I say. Of a consequence of what you say, because I think there is so much hate in the world, and you seem to think it's funny. Mm -hmm. you, you seem to sort of think... Oh, I do well, think... It, uh, no, no, but no. But it's not funny. Most of... Well, most of what's characterised as hate and abuse and harassment, this is all a sort of a hysterical drumming. It's like a moral panic by the media. The reality How is, is it a some moral people panic? in power don't like jokes being made about them. And I'm perfectly happy to tell jokes about powerful people because they can take it. I don't tell jokes about ordinary private citizens. I don't ruin the lives of private citizens like journalists do. Gawker's well, journalists who destroyed that woman, Justin Sacco, because that. she told the wrong joke. I tell jokes about people in power. I tell jokes about politicians, celebrities, journalists, uh, university professors. I tell jokes about people in h positions of, of huge institutional power who can take it. I punch up, not down. Um, you know, and I tell jokes that a lot of people find funny but do and, and, you punch and are amusing. Up? Now, the actions the of a is, small... What you do is that because you continue this hate, it then encourages other people to think, you know what, this is all right you to have a stack. You keep calling it hate. Oh I, think I, you think, I think you so do keep calling it hate. I think you're over-egging the pudding. Uh, keeping call, you know, this We're is this impish gay man who tells a few waspish are, jokes. Have, uh, threats of rape made against them on Twitter. You think that's over-egging the pudding, do you? Well, you're implying that I'm responsible for rape threats now on the basis of no evidence whatsoever. I don't, I don't think Milo actually. Why do you think I'm responsible for rape threats? These because things you're talking about, people. I didn't. I mean, follow him. I think that I think you might be. I think you might be misled by news report. I'm probably the most lied about person in America, if not in the world. I think, and I and I, and I sincerely believe that that, that you are, are 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 you know being straight up with me and and are, and, and are conducting the interview with integrity. But I think that you've been misled by inaccurate press reports about what I have personally actually done. I think Milo. I think, bro. I, this is what I'm telling you. And hopefully you listen to me. For the remainder of this uh, interview or this uh, conversation that you're having with them, um, I need you to be straight to the point, bro. Like right now, you're trying to you're trying to say the correct things or trying not to say the incorrect thing that can you know get, add more smut to your name, your jacket. But at the end of the day, man, if she's just gonna put that out there, she should be able to uh, present some bit of evidence right now as we speak, bro. To show why she backs that, um, why she believes what she believes. Uh, and very often you'll find, because I'm in the midst of these <coughs> culture wars in America, which are very bloody and very dirty, mm. full of name calling and false accusations, right the way up to the Washington Post. I think that you've been misled. Um, why if do you, you call can tell Donald me, if you can give me a specific daddy. instance of something. <laughs> Well, uh, let me just finish my point and then I'll tell you why I call him daddy. If you can think of a specific instance in which I have ever said anything that has directly given rise to rape threats of some woman, please tell me because I don't know what it is. Well, Leslie um, what Jones I do is crack would say jokes that about you celebrities. have. 
and you were taken no, off uh, Twitter. No, no, no. Leslie, as a jo- Leslie, jo- let, let me tell you, Leslie Jones. Um, not to get too much into this because I've been over it so many times, but Leslie Jones was res- was responsible for targeted harassment on that platform. I wasn't. Um, Leslie Jones was, you know, retweeting all kinds of stuff about me. I know, I barely mentioned her except to crack a joke about her looks, which I'm entitled to do. If I can't comment on a celebrity being ugly, then you know, literally the, the roof <laughs> yeah, is going to come down. Yeah, but you've got to take a consequence for um, it. You know. And all the stuff you did with uh, Gamergate. Well, Gage. you know, I do. I. You know, this this lady right here, uh, this lady. She's not, she, I'm, I'm sure she's very intelligent. I'm sure she has earned her spot on whatever she's doing on this, in, on this show and everything. I'm not going to try to dim, um, diminish her at all. But I will say, based off of how she's presenting herself and talking to, she knew Milo was coming on to the um, show. She's not presenting anything of substance to this gentleman. Like, at the end of the day, if you're going to have such a strong argument and you're going to try to pit him against, I mean, um, you're going to try to get him to be held accountable or take some consequences for the allegations she's throwing out. She should have some specifics. She didn't think that he was going to say, well, if you're saying that, well, could you please provide me with a specific um, as to when this happened? Not to when I was calling somebody ugly. Like, come on, you called them ugly. So that's, that's the specific right there. That's when people started harassing this person, saying that they was going to um, rape them. What? If you don't get the hell off the show, who invited her? She knew he was coming. She could have been, well, better, far better prepared. She didn't take this seriously. And, and that's an atrocity right there, in my opinion. In, in, my, in my most humble opinion. Okay, let's get. I accept res- I accept responsibility for my own actions, and you can throw out names like Gamergate, which your viewers are not going to understand. But the reality is, I took the side of what I consider to be, um, you know, consumers over the establishment. The consumers, actual video gamers, who were worried about their art form being poisoned by social justice, just like social justice has ruined comic books, ruined Hollywood, ruined the Academy, ruined journalism, and everybody agrees with it. Sixty-five percent of people in America think the press routinely makes stuff up. Why? Politics, the left, and I. I you know, we didn't want that same thing to happen to video games, so we resisted it. And for our trouble, we were called all manner of terrible things and accused of things we did not mm. do. Because you um, trolled you just, women, you know, that's why. All kinds of things get through. Do we have, did I troll women? Can I just ask a You question? seem to be accusing me, you're accusing me of things that I never did. I'm responsible for what I do. Mm. I'm much more interested, by the way, in your question about daddy and about daddy Donald Trump. Um, I, I called him that because I think it, it sort of annoys everybody, but also because it reflected the role that Donald Trump was playing in culture and in society at the time. He was one of those people that kind of slightly made you cringe sometimes, made you a little embarrassed sometimes, um, but was basically right, basically had your, your interests at, at heart. And if you, you know, if you stuck by him, you knew he was going to look after you in the end. I found that a lot of female voters who you might not have imagined would vote for Trump because of perhaps his locker room talk or whatever, were, were voting for him anyway. And they loved him. Why? Because he was this strong, masculine figure who projected strength and, and maybe a little machismo versus the previous president who was, you know, limp-wristed and, and, and useless and, and never, never inspired. A, there were no women fainting in the aisles or, 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 you know, light-headed on the chaise long for Obama towards the end. Um, but there were for Trump, and I found it fascinating. And so anyway, I called him daddy and it annoyed the left and the right, which is exactly where I live. If- hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I know some women who would have given Obama the draws. I do. I know some women who would have given Obama the draws. And some of these women are extremely popular. And you know what I mean? The, the celebrities that are out there, it's, it's a bunch of them. Like they would have cheated on, they would have tried to take him from Michelle in a minute if they thought he would have come, come along. But Michelle had guns. Her, her arms, man, she got some strong guns, bro. They wouldn't mess with those guns. Because if, if you catch one of Michelle's guns, bro, you, know, you got to be a man to take one of them punches. You ain't gonna be no woman taking one of them punches. So they weren't about to mess with them. That's that um that's my contribution to this part of the, um this segment. Both sides are upset with me. That's that's what I want. I, I want I want both the conservatives and liberals mad with me, then I know that I'm probably okay. <laughs> I just wanna are you the subject of fake news then? Of course, of course. I mean any conservative in public life is gonna be routinely you know 
lied about, demeaned, ridiculed. Look, look at how hard they come at me. They've called me a pedophile apologist when actually I'm the victim of it. They've mm. called me a, a neo-Nazi and a white supremacist when actually white supremacists and neo-Nazis hate me. The Daily Stormer, which is the biggest uh, white supremacist blog in the, in the world, declared a holy crusade against me. No one reported that. Uh, you know, they threatened to boycott where I worked until where I worked fired me. Nobody reported that. The fact is the far left and the far right both hate me equally, but it's only the left that gets reported on. And I consistently, because I'm effective, get smeared as far right. When somebody calls me far right, what they actually mean is I'm right wing and really good at my job. I'm right wing and I'm persuasive. And this far right label is something that the media does to attempt to suggest that I'm beyond the pale and not fit for public consumption. Well, guess what? I am. And millions of people agree. My book, despite no mainstream media interviews, despite no mm. reviews in the mainstream press, was on the New York Times bestseller list for five weeks. You don't Damn. get that by being some crazy, hateful crank. You get Sheesh. that by telling jokes and telling the truth that ordinary people want to hear. And Congratulations, bro. Congratulations, man. That's that's huge. Yeah, you gotta give it up. You get that by telling jokes and telling the truth that ordinary people want to hear and by, and by speaking truth to power. All and of my readers understand it because they actually read what I say instead of reading what people say about me. No. And all of my viewers and my fans and the people who come to my shows get it because they actually listen to me instead of what left-wing mm. journalists say about me. I certainly understand that, Milo. And, um, and when you speak, you're, you're, you know, you're often very funny, you're often um, very witty, um, and a Thank lot of you. what you say is often very interesting. Thank I you. remember listening to a, a speech you gave uh, one of the universities where you talked about, you know, the, you know, the origin of religion and the role of marriage and protecting women's rights and making it about mm -hmm. consent. And I, and mm -hmm. I love history and I thought that was mm -hmm. very interesting and you raised a lot of very good and unfashionable mm -hmm. points. And then it sort of veered off into something along the lines of, and, you know, aren't all feminists ugly or something like that. And I just kind of wondered if, <laughs> I mean, well, have you become now a sort of captive of some of these... Uh, a, a bunch of sort of followers or a sort of mob that wants to cheer and mm -hmm. shout when you say things like that, but actually doesn't get you. I mean, I kind of no. get the feeling that Donald Trump wouldn't actually get you. He wouldn't actually understand half the jokes you're making. Well, daddy never gets, the daddies never get their children, but um, <laughs> no, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's, I don't think. That this man calls Trump daddy. <laughs> <laughs> He said, "Daddies never get their children's jokes. <laughs> Daddy never gets. The daddies never get their children. But um, no, I, I, I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's true. I think what I do is weave highbrow and lowbrow. Um, in my columns, you'll see, you know, low rent jokes, and you're like, ugh, that was low hanging fruit, or ugh, do you have to be so mean? It was like newsflash: gay guys can be catty. Um, you know, I, I, I try to blend. I try to blend low culture with theology, with history, with sociology, mm. with science. So you come to one of my talks. You know, I did a talk about how fabulous Christmas was, which I think is the one you're referring to. Um, yeah. You know, I was talking. Uh, I was talking in theological terms about how the church invented marriage as a way of protecting women, yeah. uh, and how that comes from from you know Catholic tradition and all the rest of it. Um, my my talk, Ten Things I Hate About Islam, which was obviously provocatively titled, then went into the theological differences between Christianity and Islam, the conception of God being different, the, you know, how how to practice faith. I try to blend lowbrow and highbrow, that's and that's very that's, unnerving. And I don't people. want to interrupt. I they suppose that's part of the frustration because you make a lot. You make a lot of good points about the censoriousness of the left and the outrageous things that's happening mm -hmm. that happening on U.S. campuses now, where they are just shutting down debate and banning people and calling anyone they disagree with a fascist. But I guess it sort of gets All undermined true. when you unleash these kind of primal forces that we're seeing in politics now on the extreme. No, no, but it's only, it's only journalists. It's only journalists who think that my position on this is undermined by my language here. Everybody else loves it. It's only journalists because they're so earnest and high-minded and, and stuffy <laughs> and, and pompous. No offence, I'm not talking about you, but, no, no, but right, yeah. other journalists who say this stuff, you know. <laughs> he most certainly is talking about you. <laughs> Y'all are too tight booty. Huh? Missing the day going to, sometimes you get so locked in on the delivery that you miss the message. And sometimes you're so difficult and so judgmental on the messenger that you miss the message. Stuffy and, and pompous. No offense, I'm not talking about you, but, no, no, but right, yeah. other journalists who say this stuff, you know, um, we're just getting to know one another, so I don't know what you think. But, but other journalists who say this stuff, you know, they're sort of, oh, 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 you can't possibly use this language. Oh, oh, oh. You know, give me a break. If I want to say that feminists are fat and ugly, which by the way, most of them are, then I will. No, um, you know, if I want at the same time they to talk not. about. <laughs> if I want to say at the same time that, you know, if I want to make a complex historical 
whole point about the different emergences of strands of feminism, if I want to talk about the virtues, you know, of equity feminism versus whatever, I can be both and I can do both. And you know what it shows when people are upset about those two things? It shows that there's a double standard at work. You are perfectly happy for John Stewart, for, uh, you know... Go ahead, bro. Talk about the double standard. That's, that's what I'm talking John, about. For, for uh, Bill, Bill Maher, for, uh, you know, mm. um, Stephen Colbert, to blend highbrow and lowbrow, to be both comedians and cultural commentators, to be clowns and historians. You're perfectly happy when a left winger does it. But for Trevor Noah to be clowns and historians. You're perfectly happy when a left winger does it. But for some reason, now I've arrived, I'm the first person on the right ever to do it, and suddenly people are like, wait, you're not supposed to do that. Conservatives mm -hmm. aren't supposed to behave like this. Wait, you can't be real and funny and dangerous and also a bit offensive and be able to talk about Nietzsche and Sartre and Heidegger <laughs> and, and, and Descartes. What? What is going on here? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but this is a double standard. We've had it for decades on the left. Well, now you have it on the right. Welcome to the new era. Um, you know, and, and if people don't like it and people can't cope with, with, with my blend of, 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 of elevated discourse as well as low-rent cattiness, that merely demonstrates their own hypocrisy. Uh, the fact is, most people love what I do. They come to my shows in droves, which is why we're sold out in Sydney. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to selling uh, tens of thousands of copies of my book when it goes on sale November 2nd in Australia. Um, and I, I can't wait to, to, to explore the country because Australia is, uh, I think, my number three uh, place for fans. Millions of Australians watch my stuff. They come to see, they read my columns and watch my videos. Um, I think Australia needs saving from their own media. Oh. All right. <laughs> well, Penthouse Australia is bringing Miley <laughs> Anopoulos on his Troll Academy tour to Adelaide, <laughs> Perth, Melbourne, Sydney and the Gold Coast from November. All right, that was dope. I enjoyed that. I like the fact that he ain't back down. He did not back down. He started out a little bit trying to protect what he was going to say. But then after a while, he said, you know what? Screw this. Screw this. Y'all are being hypocrites. Y'all being hypocrites, so I'm not going to be one. I'm going to stick to my guns, and I'm glad he did that. I'm, he, he stuck to his guns. Don't you think he stuck to his guns? I think he stuck to his daggone guns. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside of the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual, man. Love y'all. Keep doing your thing. And happy 4th of July. All right? Love y'all.